There we go. Okay, so I haven't posted in a while. I've been incredibly busy, but look how much progress the real spaceship has on it. Um, it's, uh, it's coming along really well. Uh, I'd also love to show some pictures of these other things that I'm working on, like this and that. Oh wait, I can't. Um, but on rockets, I've done a lot of work uh, behind the scenes in software. I've done a ton of bench testing, so let's get right into it. Last flights went really well, with the exception of the one that crashed, but we won't talk about that one. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the last flight, though, overall went great. It was a standard up, deploy some things, come back down, but we can do some more interesting stuff than that, actually. Um, in that vein, uh, real rockets actually have a place that they go other than just space. Um, they curve to the side, basically. So this is called a gravity turn. Uh, there is a direction, basically, an inclination that the rocket is aiming for. So the rocket has a designated trajectory that it's ending up targeting. Uh, that's an angle on the surface of the Earth relative to the latitude and longitude that it's at, mostly latitude because it's uh, it's kind of off of whatever east is. Because things go mostly sideways, if I have an azimuth direction that I can set the pad down and angle to, then when the wind blows things back, I don't have to walk as far, uh, which is kind of a selfish reason to do it, but it's not the only one. Uh, you also have the need to avoid coming back down on your launch pad, which is why a lot of full-scale rockets do a small divert maneuver immediately on lifting off so that if they come crashing back down or the flight termination system is triggered, they don't spread their flaming hot uh, Cheeto debris all over the, uh, the launch pad there and destroy it because that's also expensive. The rocket is too, but uh, if you lose everything, then, then that's even worse. When it comes to landing also, uh, we wanna go up, we wanna move to the side, and then we wanna come down not on top of the launch pad. Similar problem, but uh, a little bit different of a use case. And we wanna do all of these things. So as a result, we are going to be implementing a gravity turn uh, piece of software. The software we're going to use is going to inject new set points into the PID loop as a target. So the PID loop right now just has a target of zero. So try and make it point. Um, so zero degrees is up right now in my coordinate system that I've defined where uh, each axis has uh, a roll pitch yaw set point. So all of those are trying to maintain inside of whatever they're set to, which like I said, is zero right now, but we can get a little fancier and we can put in new uh, set points with time. So at one second, we can make it go to 10 degrees. At two seconds, we can make it go to 15. And at three seconds, we can make it go to uh, 30 um, in every axis if we wanted. We could have this thing spinning around, doing all sorts of crazy stuff, uh, provided we have enough burn time, control authority, and altitude, basically. If we got really fancy, we could tell it to do a loop, uh, which sounds like a really good project in the future. So how do you test this? Well, we use our handy dandy test stand with a coaxial propeller that mimics the thrust of the rocket motor. So this is basically standing in for a rocket motor, but it can burn for way longer because it's electric and it can be run in my house, which if I ran the rocket motor in the house, that would be a bad time, uh, would be the technical term. So I developed this software, I put it into the airframe and everything. Uh, I ran dozens and dozens of different uh, runs to make sure it worked. Uh, I was tweaking a lot of the parameters for how aggressive the controller should be. And it actually exposed a lot of problems in my gains that I had tuned previously, which while they worked, they were a little more wobbly and they weren't very responsive to inputted commands, which means they don't work terribly well as a real uh, controller solution. I'm not programming my gains using uh, a software-based method. I'm using a more empirical method of having the actual plant locked in this test stand and wiggling it around and seeing how it responds and having that match up with my desired uh, control. I'm just a little more familiar with that. It isn't necessarily the wrong way or the right way. It's just how I approach this problem. 
but I was able to input a bunch of different commands and have the rocket point all sorts of different directions in flight. Uh, for the real launch, uh, I packed everything up and went out to the field, but the new command directions are a lot more uh, conservative. You want very conservative gains because the air can make the rocket go into a tumble if it tries to turn uh, its attitude too aggressively. So we make small steps and small changes in time to prevent that. So after clearing the airspace at the field, uh, we proceed to launch. All righty, look at that. We lost the nose cone, but that's okay. I really like this GoPro shot of the vehicle lifting off and pitching downrange. It's a great shot. It kind of encapsulates the entire flight profile in one frame without, uh, without it ever basically going out of the frame, which, which shows us a lot about what's going on. Uh, you can see the vehicle lift up and at about the one and a half second mark, it begins to curve over to 10 degrees uh, downrange. This is in one axis and then we're going to go to a two axis turn and then we're gonna go try and go back up to vertical as best we can. But what you're gonna see here is it kind of wiggles and fishtails a little bit towards the end because it's running out of propellant, it's running out of thrust, and it doesn't have the authority to turn itself back over. These engines only burn for about four to three seconds, uh, and that isn't a lot of time to do much maneuvering. But going forward, I have other rocket motors that burn for far longer and eventually we'll be working up to even longer burning motors that allow us to increase the flight duration and maybe do some more interesting trajectories. So why is this interesting? Oh my God, I yelled so much. Overall, I would call that flight a great success. Everything that I programmed in happened and we got the rocket back A-OK. -okay. There was a little bit of damage to the legs due to, again, one of them not locking out when deployed, but I think this also goes to show that even with a parachute and something predictable, uh, the wobbling and swaying of the rocket can really cause havoc with trying to land upright. It's a good indicator also of down the road how much different a propulsive landing would be. Um, it also shows that I'm able to steer the rocket away from the launch pad and potentially go back to vertical. And I have a lot of really great data on the set point and response time of the rocket in flight. So I can help tune my gains for the next mission, uh, which may have a little bit different profile. A lot of this work goes into bolstering up the software for my SLS vehicle, which is very far along and almost ready to fly. I didn't quite make it in time for the launch of the actual Artemis vehicle, but at the same time, I was able to attend uh, Maker Fair this year in Orlando, which was a great showcase of a lot of the great talent in the area and the cool things that people work on just in my backyard, basically. I got really great response from the public on seeing my rockets in person and a lot of great conversations uh, over my time there. I loved having Blue Origin next to me and be able to talk to them and all of the excitement around space was really palpable uh, for those couple days. So while that took me away from working on things a little bit, I thought it was a great way to motivate myself for making videos and getting back into things again. My work schedule has been pretty crazy. I kind of do all of this by myself and that was the one thing that I realized is probably the most impressive part of all of this uh, when talking to people was doing everything yourself is just hard, it takes a while. Uh, so when I get videos out, you know, I am really pushing myself to do work after work, basically. So if you like this content, be sure to subscribe. Let me know. I really appreciate it. Um, you can go to Patreon and subscribe and get um, a little bit faster content of uh, videos. But even there, like it's all based on what I'm able to do. And my work schedule is often the uh, limiting factor there. But hopefully as the year begins to go to an end, I'll be able to get a lot more video content out and we'll be able to have an SLS launch here uh, on the small scale, just like the full scale. 
So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one, hopefully.